Hey everyone and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb and today we are talking Big Ten West predictions and going through the potential of some of these teams finding their way to the Big Ten Championship. We have a lot to get into today. Obviously it's going to be a blast and I'm very much looking forward to it. Caleb, how you doing? Doing great. Uh, back to football today. So uh, yeah. big pumped about it. I uh, get to talk about, yeah, the whole Big Ten West. It was fun going through each one of their schedules. Uh, learned a little bit about some non-conference teams that, uh, you know, we don't usually see whatsoever. And uh, yeah, it was just fun all around. Uh, excited to see where this shake up and be completely wrong by the end of the season. <laughs> Tough, man, tough. So this year, we we went through the whole schedule, so we'll be given like the actual like end-all, be-all predictions for each team. What's important is the conference games at the end of the day, so that's what we're going to be really focusing on in the video when it comes to finishing on the rankings in the Big Ten. So I think we can start near the bottom of the list and work our way up, kind of build some of the anticipation for who's going to win the, the, the West and go from there. So uh, Caleb, lead us off who you got down there at the bottom of the Big Ten West. Yeah, it's tough. I got Illinois at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, winning only three games. Uh, th their line's three and a half. I think they'll probably beat it one and eight in the in uh, their Big Ten play. Uh, their only Big Ten win is going to be against Rutgers was my prediction. Uh, so, yeah, not not an easy one for Illinois this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, with Bielma coming in, you know, as the new head coach, obviously, there is some interesting upside. I think I think both of us were talking about like, well, what if this team finds their rhythm like in the middle of this season and they start picking up some wins in the second half? So I can see the narrative where you could have Illinois, you know, winning more than one Big Ten game for sure. And like, they feel like a type of team is going to upset somebody at some point, but it was really hard to predict where that would come from in their schedule. And so like, I ended up with them having, uh, you know, going one and eight in the Big Ten with a total of three wins on the year. But like, I, I think I really do think that they're going to at least upset one big time team or at least have one nice upset win in the Big Ten at some point. So I really do think that they're going to go two and seven probably. But I didn't have the balls to to give them that that win against any of the solid teams they play, especially in the second half of the year. Yeah, it's interesting. Some of the, you know, maybe uh, more winnable games like Northwestern or Minnesota, they do kind of play in later in the year, which I don't think favors Illinois whatsoever. Yeah. Um, Maybe if that was earlier in the season when they played those guys, uh, Purdue's yeah, interesting. might give them the edge. Yeah, Purdue is interesting too. Uh, honestly, where they shake up is, uh, I think they're they're the biggest question mark for me on the season. For sure, for sure. Oh. So I I don't know. Overall, like the offenses. I mean, last year they were just awful. Yet somehow, somehow, of course, we are Nebraska fans. If you guys are joining us from uh, from the other teams or other fandoms, um, we are Nebraska fans, but. We tried to make this thing as unbiased as possible, but last year, of course, Illinois took us to the woodshed, even though they sucked. And um, like, they were just literally awful, like I I embarrassingly bad. And some, for us to drop a game like that, it's actually comedy. But um, overall, I don't know. I think their offense could still be at least respectably decent. Their defense is interesting because like they're bringing back Jake Hansen and some of those guys, but I don't really know how to feel exactly about how the team could perform earlier on in the year. Luckily, they have some like somewhat winnable games. So I could actually see them I can see them making a run and being very surprising at least. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think I'm willing to predict it, but it's very possible. So um, who do you got at the at second to last here? So now it kind of shakes out into, into tiebreakers and stuff. Now all these teams have more than one win in the Big Ten. But for me, Northwestern lost the tiebreaks. Um, Interesting. So they're th three and six in the Big Ten for me. But they do have six wins on the season, which is more than a couple other teams on the list. So uh, bull eligible, but further down in the Big Ten ranks. Um, and they lost in, in conference to us, Nebraska, Michigan, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Purdue. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. You I have kinda, a Purdue upset there. I do have a Purdue upset. Um, oh, man. It gets interesting with Northwestern because like when they have – Obviously, like last year, Peyton Ramsey's gone now. And so they got Ryan Holinsky or uh, Hunter Johnson as their starting quarterbacks. Offensively, they could be at least okay. But defensively is where you're looking at this team to beat, to have their stamp on, like on the Big Ten. But they lost so many starters last year. It's yeah. it's hard to see them maintaining that level of, of consistency. Like when you lose like guys like Greg Newsom and Patty Fisher, you know, suddenly you're like, Patty Fisher, the 10 year starter at Northwestern. Right. Can you replace those guys that easily? I, I don't know. So like 
I was a little iffy on Northwestern. I'll, I'll just say, I guess, spoiler. I actually feel like they're going to be pretty good, though, still. And I have them going five and four in the Big Ten. But, um, I, yeah, I'm surprised you haven't losing to Purdue because is that more of a statement to how, how you think Purdue might be more competent than people have, like people currently think right now? Um, I think that Purdue's still going to find wins. Um, okay. I, still, like, I still think offensively, um, they'll still pose some threats as they usually do. And I think they just kind of have wild games anyway with their offensive system um, that like they'll stay in some games. I, again, I, I have them next on my list all with five wins less yeah, okay. than Northwestern. I'm at three and six. I just didn't feel confident putting Purdue like uh, bottom of the of the Big Ten West, essentially, with only two wins. And I just didn't really know where else they were going to find it. And again, I think Northwestern, again, losing all those guys will be inconsistent. I mean, I could. The thing is, they have plenty of 50-50 games. Like, I see us easily beating us and then them jumping the standings. Like, if you think back to two years ago, like, they, they were, they obviously had a great season last year. And then two years and three years ago or whatnot, they can really go up and down more so than a lot of other Big Ten teams where they can have a great season and then a really bad season. Um, yeah. So I think they're way more susceptible to that. And I, not that six wins in a bowl game is a terrible season for Northwestern historically anyway. I have Purdue lower on the list. So I have them at two and four or two and eight in the Big Ten with four wins overall on the year. So finishing second to last in the Big Ten West. Also, we'll be doing like if, if you think we're not like diving in deep in every single one of these teams, we will be doing full breakdowns of all of them in each week when we play against these teams, when Nebraska is playing against these teams. Yeah, got, and got we also did stuff. a full breakdown a month and a half ago or so with our full season predictions. So you can go check out that video as well for like really in depth. Otherwise, we just never get through this video because we're going through all the teams in the in the conference. But um, yeah, with Purdue, I agree with that. Like when you're losing like Derek Barnes and you have a you have a new defensive coordinator now, which maybe that maybe that'll help. But um, you know, Derek Barnes is the leader <laughs> of their defense, probably the only standout player that really stood out last year. Um, obviously, you're losing Rondell Moore and. The question is, I mean, David Bell was really impressive last year. So, like, can you can you rebound that offense and really capitalize with David Bell on the outside and find those big time plays downfield? That's all possible. But overall, I feel like the only wins that I really see for like they have a really really good chance in would be against Michigan State and Illinois in the conference. And so, I have them at four wins on the season, two and eight, and finishing second to last in the Big Ten, which is kind of where I'm at with it right now. So, on my list at number three, three third to last, or I guess fifth in the Big Ten, I don't. And we can probably transition to fifth fifth in the Big Ten now, but I actually have Minnesota at four and five in the Big Ten. And uh, on, but they have seven wins on the year. So it's not like they had like some awful season, but four and five on the, in the Big Ten. They losses to Ohio State, Northwestern, Iowa, Indiana and Wisconsin. So they don't they don't have some easy cakewalk in the Big Ten with Indiana and Ohio State as the crossover matches. So that gets tough as well. The question marks is how well can they throw the ball? How well can they get the ball downfield? And what's their defense going to look like? Obviously, we know this team's going to have an insane O-line and they're going to be able to run the ball with Ibrahim. But the question comes down to whether or not they can get some stops on defense and if they can still transition to having a pretty good passing game with Tanner Morgan, where last year was a little bit questionable for Tanner Morgan coming off of the, the absolutely incredible year in 2019. 2020 was a little iffy. So... I'm Very not iffy. sold that Tanner Morgan's going to be some elite Big Ten uh, player, but the question comes down to can they just continue to run the ball and be efficient on the ground? If that's the case, they're going to at least find a handful of wins in the Big Ten, but then it comes down to can they actually beat these big time teams? And uh, that's where I don't think they can. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I think Amon Bell coming back. Um, and I think with Ibrahim, like you said, and their good offensive line uh, with like Floyd, the like five, the dude's probably going to go very high in the draft. Yeah, uh, I think again they're just they're going to be able to win a lot more games and they'll be able to control the line of scrimmage, which is so vital in the Big Ten as Nebraska fans have come to learn. I have them lose to OSU, Iowa, Indiana, Wisconsin. I could honestly see it flipping though, where they could have more wins than eight, um, where they could beat like an Iowa or a Wisconsin. I think they'll be really competitive, but it is their defense that leaves a lot of question marks. Uh, for everybody, and I think that's going to end up biting them this year. Yeah, that that's what gets me a little bit worried. We only thing we differ on is the Northwestern Minnesota game, so th that would be the question mark for me. I think, like I said, I have Northwestern winning that game, but I mean, I definitely could see it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it really just comes out of that one. So I feel like their secondary is just not going to be good. 
And so then you're like, okay, how does this defense play out? They're going to be a competitive team for sure. There's no way they're going to be like bad. So that's, that's why I feel like the middle of the table makes a lot of sense with some upside to find an upset, at, especially at home against some of these big time teams. So who knows? Next on my list here would then be Northwestern because I have them having the tiebreaker over Minnesota. So they're both, uh, so our Northwestern has the game win over Minnesota. So Northwestern is five and four in the big 10 with losses. Well, I have them losing to us and then Michigan, Iowa, and Wisconsin. So an interesting season for them with the losses there. But overall, I think Northwestern is going to be a really, really good team. Like I said, their offense is still going to be very solid. And I'd imagine they're still going to have a very competitive defense. But that's going to be a really, really tough game with that Northwestern Minnesota game and see how that goes back and forth. So I'm OK with somebody having that one go either way because it's a pretty 50 50 game in my head. But uh, yeah, Northwestern five and four, eight wins on the season as well with the with the conference, the non cons. Yeah, again, they were second to last in mine. And then uh yeah, Minnesota was much more up there. They were third in the Big Ten with five and yeah. four. So. so then who do you have at fourth in the Big Ten? Hey, I have Nebraska. Let's go. Uh, while less wins than Northwestern with only five, we do have a way tougher non-con, though. Uh, so I was at four and five in the Big Ten uh, We uh, with losses to Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Um I, nothing crazy there. We beat the Illinois, Northwestern, and Purdue's of the world, which doesn't make me too upset. The only thing, like, I would, you know, if we could get Minnesota and we then we're like third and we're only losing to Iowa and Wisconsin, uh, I think that's a, that'd be a great uh, step in the right direction for the Nebraska program at this point um, <laughs> to kind of get Dang. ourselves above those uh, Minnesotas, Northwesterns of the world, because, uh, Honestly, they've finished a lot better than we have the last few years. So You don't honestly, say. I mean, we feel like we're at the bottom of the totem pole now, essentially. Uh, I mean, you know, last we got blown out by Illinois. We only beat Purdue. So I think climbing to, you know, at least the middle of the pack in the Big Ten West uh, feels like some sort of the right direction. Although, oh man, we've taken so many steps back. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, obviously, again, we, we talked a lot about Nebraska this offseason, to say the least. Um, so, I yeah, I have Nebraska at third then in, in my rankings with, at five and four with the tiebreaker over Northwestern with the win in Memorial Stadium. That being said, though, I have Northwestern at eight wins, but Nebraska at seven again because that non-con overall. So, it, that's what gets tough. So again, I have losses to to Oklahoma, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, Wisconsin. So those four same core: Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Michigan's interesting, like we said. But again, even if we were to upset Michigan in 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 Lincoln, then it still feels like we're almost inevitably going to blow one of those road games at some point, uh, just with how the yeah. history of our offense and how uh, Adrian's I mean, yeah, played I on think, the road. Again, Michigan's pretty. I mean. There's there's it's definitely a, a good chance. For Nebraska. Yeah, 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 for sure. We have a for higher sure. percent chance than uh, definitely a lot of those other ones. Definitely, so like, for sure. like Wisconsin. Yeah, absolutely. So, like that's what gets interesting, I think, for Nebraska fans to see if we can kind of find those games on or at home, and especially if fans are there for the whole season, which hopefully we end up having that. But then the debate comes, like, okay, you know, do we really trust us to win on the road against Michigan State? Do we really trust us to find, you know, a win against? Does people have us winning against Minnesota on the road? That seems unlikely. Just both of our performances on road games. So that's why and like five Minnesota. and four, I think makes a lot of sense for us in the big 10, but you know, and then end up ending up with seven wins. But again, like we talked about a lot already this year, that could go either way with how this offense ended up performing with Adrian Martinez. So Nebraska is a big time wild card in these rankings. It could really shift the tables depending on how our offense ends up playing, especially. So we'll see. We'll see. So then you have Minnesota at third, right? Yep. Uh, with eight wins, again, they lose into OSU, Iowa, Indiana, Wisconsin. Luckily, Minnesota has a pretty uh, tough other division side uh, of the of the Big Ten West. They got to play right. OSU and Indiana. So uh, we're not the only ones this time actually play, having some tough crossovers. Yep, exactly, uh, year, exactly. So. so the top two for both of us is the exact same, so we can talk about both of these at the same time. So, uh, big time reveal here. We have Wisconsin winning the Big Ten. We have Iowa coming in second here at seven and two for Iowa for Caleb, six and three for me, and then we both have Wisconsin going eight and one in the Big Ten with different losses actually. So, um, lead the way here, Caleb. Why do you have Iowa going seven and two? Uh, it's just the fact that they have a really good offensive line, uh, a and decent Tyler running Gibson. back. 
Yeah. And I just, again, they make so few mistakes. It's not, it's going to be nothing flashy to beat you. Um, no. It's, it's just going to, they're going to wear <laughs> you out. And by the fourth quarter, you're going to collapse. And uh, it's just how it's been. Uh, we've seen it so many times. Nebraska has been close right there. I mean, again, they're nothing flashy. They're nothing crazy. And it feels so within reach. And uh, I've picked Nebraska to beat Iowa like the last three years. We've just not come away with it. So at this point, they're just, I can't realistically pick us to win. Uh, <laughs> this is how I feel. It's uh, at home, man. It is at home, but it hasn't mattered. <laughs> no. <laughs> For the hasn't. last five years. So. I, I actually think that this is the year we beat them. And that's why I have us beating them, which is how we end up getting the seventh win at the end of the year. But um, I have Iowa losing to Iowa State, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Nebraska. So those three Big Ten losses, PSU, Wisconsin, and us. So, well, first of all, Penn State's interesting because they're they're kind of hard to gauge exactly where they're going to be this year after their horrible offensive yeah. performance last year. But I think both of us expected that defense to bounce back and be really good. And we saw Penn State seem to get better as the year went along last year and kind of find their groove again. So and they're that's a little my- bit difficult to predict. And that's my that's where we flip because you have uh, uh, Iowa losing and I have Iowa winning against Penn State. Uh, yeah. So so, yep. so that's the so that's our difference. You have there. them getting uh, nine wait, wins. Nine yeah. wins. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what's interesting though for you though is that you have Iowa losing to Maryland. Why? Yep. Because they're Iowa. To us, bro. <laughs> Talia. Because Talia. I don't know. I think Maryland's exciting. I think they'll be decent this year. I actually and, like Maryland. And Iowa. They always drop one bet. I mean, just like they're going to drop some game. Um, you know, they're, I don't think they're good enough to win to get to that 8-1 uh, and one Wisconsin level. I think Petrus will make mistakes against some team. Who knows against it's going to be. So I chose Maryland. Um, again, because upsets do happen in the Big Ten. You have to predict them somewhere. And if you're going to predict them, why not have Iowa lose embarrassingly, you know? So... <laughs> yeah, that's what's tough with Iowa is because, like, we expect their O-line to be insane. We expect their secondary to be very, very good. And then the question comes down to, like, okay, D-line, where is that looking like? Receiving core looks really iffy right now. And then, obviously, quarterback. Great. Yeah, exactly. So, with, with those three cores with massive questions, it comes down to, can they be a top, like, 15 running offense in the in the, in the the country? And if they can, then they can win nine games but i but I'm again a they're susceptible they're they're definitely susceptible to losses yeah. and again I, I do think that you know say that nebraska has a good run stop this year and running is pretty much all they can do with a good secondary i do agree with you that i was very beatable again but we i've said this pretty much every year against Iowa that right. there is something wrong with them that we could win and having their defensive line not be as good if they're not as good this year it's very likely that Nebraska could win uh but I'm scared as as always so yep, I, yep. Be, but again I agree with you that I could see Nebraska winning but uh yeah yeah so undoubtedly the biggest surprise for us was this last team it was Wisconsin because we were going through this we we individually both went through we weren't talking to each other when we were going through our predictions here. Gotta be unbiased. And we were were statting them out a little bit, trying to work on which teams are gonna, you know, find these wins and what's it gonna look like. And I came out with eleven and one. And I'm like, oh, Wisconsin's eleven and one. I can't, I can't have let this happen. <laughs> and then I look over it, and then we, I'm like, Caleb, what do you have Wisconsin at? And he's like, dude, I have Wisconsin at eleven and one. And I'm like, no freaking way man so we both have wisconsin at 11 and 1 like you gotta be kidding me so i have of them losing to penn state near the beginning of the year and he has them losing to michigan so what are our thoughts on this team of course graham mertz and i don't even think either of us are even that sold on graham mertz but this schedule just worked out oh it did i mean they have Penn State week one, but it is at home. You have them losing uh, early. I I have them winning that game because it's at home. Then, uh, yeah, they play ESU. Ooh. Yeah, Notre then, Dame's interesting. Notre Dame's interesting, but Jack Cohn, who <laughs> the, was their starting quarterback, I don't think Notre Dame's going to be as good this year. I don't think so either. I mean, we've seen what Jack Cohn can do. Yeah, then they have Michigan. So you're like, okay. You know, does that play out like that? That's going to be in a really, really interesting start for Wisconsin. And if they're 4-0 after the first four games, then you're like, oh, no. 
Now yeah, and then it's <laughs> it, then their away game. It's at Illinois. That's not scary. I mean, they did lose to Illinois last year, though. I will say that. <laughs> but uh, fair. And then it's Army at home at Purdue, Iowa at home, Rutgers away, Northwestern at home, Nebraska at home. And then the last game is at Minnesota. Right, and that would be the interesting one. Uh, but but all of their tough games are at home, and all their, I mean, and their crossover games are just cupcakes. You know, I know the, the returning situation is is what gets me thinking. Like, you know, besides, I, I, I mean, don't they, they know Penn State, but it's at home. I'm my that's my issue is that I think this team maybe I'm giving them too much credit, and and that's my issue here because, you know, defensively I don't think they should be like elite like based off the the personnel that they currently have i don't see them being like top four in the big 10 defensively but I, it's just the, a, it feels like the wins are just kind of going their way but they have an incredible o-line they should be able to run the ball well and then if if graham Mertz is at least solid which it seems like he's at least solid that they're gonna find wins and then their it's schedule just, yeah, works I, out where they have their tough games at home it's just like no, we know that Notre Dame is not going to expose them because they get exposed every time they get into a bowl game. You know, it's like Penn, Penn State. Maybe you're right, maybe, but we Penn State was so bad last year. I mean, granted, they do get their quarterback back after being hurt, but still, like, there's a ton of questions with them. They lost a ton last year, um, even even still to the draft. So I I'm not sold on Penn State. Uh, they gotta kind of earn it back for me, uh, and then again, yeah, that's fair. Mi- I guess again, Michigan's an interesting game for me. While it's at home, I think they're gonna be a more uh, disciplined football team. So I think if anything, that Harbaugh is they're pretty solid. They're you know, there's again, it's like it's like a better Iowa. They're like upgraded Iowa is what I always see Michigan as. They're just a way more. They're uh, they're nothing flashy, but they're more solid. Okay. Um, All right. That's kind. Of, that's kind of my thought process. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Jack Stanborn's kind of got to look at there on the defensive side, kind of that anchor for the defense. But I, I'm. That, that's why I was surprised that I had him at 11 and eight and one in the Big Ten. I think that they might get upset here, and these are where the trap games come into play with with some of the, with a team like this. You don't know if they have necessarily that that anchor and that that discipline to to win and to go eight and one or eleven and one. I don't know if they feel like that type of team this year. But yeah, I mean the they could lose to Northwestern, you know. Right. Or yeah, or Minnesota. Like at Minnesota, their last game, it's a rivalry. You know, maybe Minnesota's okay. Like you Yeah, know. I mean Iowa, Northwestern, Michigan, or in Michigan, Minnesota, Penn State. There's a world where those could a handful of those could flip and then suddenly Wisconsin's seven you know five. at seven and five or eight and four. But it seems like I'm giving Wisconsin the edge here because I don't have confidence in Iowa or Minnesota either. So it's like, you know, we'll see. So that's where it kind of comes down to the wire. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say down below and drop all your comments about the Big Ten mm. West and what you guys have to say. I mean, again, go check out our uh, our Nebraska preview video for a really in-depth breakdown of some of these matchups and what that could look like for Nebraska. And then you can go check out our, our video about Adrian Martinez if you want a little bit of in-depth breakdown about the strengths and weaknesses of a player like that. And a lot more. So make sure to be on the lookout for all those videos. And, of course, we are, like, basically a week out from football. So Yes! <laughs> yes! And Please! so we're going to have the Illinois, Nebraska, Illinois. We're playing week zero. Our prediction video coming out next week as well. So be on the lookout for that one. We have it's a lot so coming down the barrel this week. So be on the lookout for it. But as always... Ugh. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Share it if you guys really enjoyed it. But as always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. And this has been Backseat Sports. And we will see you next time. (laughs) Go Big Red.